Scorpion Capital, a short seller, released a short report on Ginkgo Bioworks. And the stock is down around 20% so far today. Remember, we had Jason Kelly from Ginkgo Bioworks uh, on episode 1239 of this very podcast. So that was this year. They are a synthetic biology company uh, that claim to have an interesting business model. They would develop products on a service based basis. In other words, instead of them making the products, they would work with other companies and they would essentially be the Amazon Web Services of synthetic biology as opposed to other companies that were going to build the products themselves. We'll get into that in a minute. And um, Jason was well spoken on the program. Uh, I did get a couple of DMs that, hey, this company's a little shaky. Maybe they used other choice language. So I always take the approach here of let the founder speak on our podcast and let them explain their business model. And here we go. Here's Ginkgo CEO describing their business model in this 38 second clip. Let's talk about it on the other side. And, and by the way, the way Ginkgo's business works is we're like yeah. sell programmers for hire. Got okay, it. right. So I'm sitting in front of like a 200,000 square foot compiler and debugger for genetic code here in Boston. It's like robotic automation doing what I did back in grad school. And then we use that machine to basically program a cell to meet a customer spec. And then we give it to them and we make money like kind of like Apple would make money in the app store, right? Like we, we get like a royalty or equity in their company or some reach into oh, the value wow. of the app. That's yeah. a fascinating business model. So what's an example of a company? that sends you on a mission like this. All right, so I'll, get, I'll give you what I like. So there's a company called Kronos up in Canada. It's a Canadian cannabis company, all right? Altria owns like half of this company. Okay, so what you see there is, he explains their business model, and I was like, well, that's fascinating. It's kind of like an incubator plus a service business. So this would be as if Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud um, or Azure from Microsoft said, hey, let's have you uh, come in and we will, um, you pay us to do your synthetic biology research, but we get some upside. It's a pretty good business model, right? It's like an incubator plus service revenue. Kind of interesting. Um, it would be like a development shop building your app and investing in your company. So uh, we researched Kronos um, and um, it seems like they don't share similar investors in Ginkgo. And if you look at Ginkgo, and we'll get to that in a minute, why that's important. Ginkgo build themselves as kind of an app store or AWS for synthetic biology. This would be a platform that other people could build on top of, right? So they did a SPAC back in May at a $15 billion valuation. Uh, and we officially started tracking the DNA stock. So if you do a search for dollar sign DNA on Twitter, or you, you search for that, uh, this SPAC was led by former head of MGM, Harry Sloan. I mean, that's a little bit of a mini red flag. I don't know what MGM has to do with DNA and synthetic biology. So we had a similar collapse for another synthetic biology company that we also had on the podcast on episode 1231. I had been hearing about synthetic biology from my bestie, David Friedberg on All In. I said, okay, what are the, I said to my producers, what are the synthetic biology companies? Let's get J. Cal and the audience up to speed on them. Let's have them on and let's let them talk. Well, that company, Zymergen, announced that they were way off their revenue predictions. They'd make no revenue in 2022, and they removed their CEO, Josh Hoffman, who was on the program. All right, so let's get back to Ginkgo. This morning, uh, which is Wednesday, October 6, 2021, short seller Scorpion Capital released a report on Ginkgo's business model, calling it a, and then I'm going to put this in quotes, a colossal scam. Now, Scorpion is an activist short seller, just like Hindenburg Research whose reports we discussed on Nicola, Nicola also on the program, also, uh, you know, um, or I should say, not also, they turned out to be really, really, um, seems like one of the biggest frauds we're going to see in a long time in Silicon Valley. Scorpion uh, released their first short seller. And isn't it interesting, Scorpion Hindenburg, it seems like all these short sellers have to name themselves some really scary, <laughs> deadly name, Scorpion and Hindenburg. Wow. Uh, very evocative. Good, good, uh, good persuasive names, I would say, in, in, in good branding, really strong brands. Like you think about Hindenburg, you think about Scorpion, you don't want to be involved and you don't want to, uh, touch either one of those. So in April, they released a report on QuantumScape, uh, the EV battery startup that had lost 85% of its value since peaking at $130 a share in December of 2020. Activist investors, if you don't know, take a large position, then they disclose their rationale to the public in a PR move. Uh, the biggest examples would be Bill Ackman's uh, Pershing Square 
and Paul Singer's Elliott Management. I think Bill Ackman was the one who did uh, Herbalife. That kind of blew up in his face. He wasn't able to convince the world that that was an MLM scam, um, which was his position. So you can read the following at Scorpion uh, Capital's Twitter feed, which is Scorpion Fund, one word. Um, and here's the six tweet thread they released this morning. Number one, we are short DNA. Ginkgo Bioworks is a colossal scam. Uh, Frankenstein mashup of the worst frauds of the last 20 years. At $23 billion market cap, it is rare to see a related party scheme on Ginkgo scale in the US markets. It is quite simply the US version of the China hustle in quotes. Number two in the tweet storm. And this is a really important one. Ginkgo business model, which I had talked about in that clip, is based on a dubious shell game. Most of its foundry revenue, I called it um, the foundry a um, an accelerator, uh, and observed 72% in 2020, and almost 100% of its deferred revenue are derived from related party and in question and quotes customers. Investments into these entities by Ginkgo and its investors are round tripped back. And that is the key word in the sentence round trip back. What is round tripping? Well, let me give you a little uh, history lesson. AOL America online um, had controlled much of the internet in the early days. And you're like, how did AOL control the internet? Well, there were 30 million people paying for AOL at the time. And that was how people figured out how to pick a website. Uh, people didn't have just like a DSL connection largely then they would dial up into AOL. And then AOL would present them like, here's the choices of what's on the web. That's why they bought Netscape. And what they did was they did what were called portal deals. These portal deals would cost $50 million, $100 million, a lot of money at the time. Um, in today's money, they would be $500 million deals, let's say, maybe even billion. So they would sell a company, I think it was like CD now or music something, the music category, they would sell somebody the auto category. So there would be somebody who was trying to make the Yahoo of autos or the Yahoo of music or CDs, or movies, and they would say, Okay, we would like you to pay us $50 million, they might invest in the company at the same time, $50 million. So they'd say, Okay, we'll invest $50 million into your startup. So when you take it public, we get the upside because IPOs were going crazy in the dot com days, this was the accusation, then the money would then the sales department would say, okay, give us $50 million in advertising. And it was like, they wouldn't have the $50 million if you hadn't invested the $50 million. And this is the shell game, right, that they're talking about here is and round tripping means the money takes a round trip. I give you the money, you give it back. Okay, everybody, let's take a moment to talk about growth marketing and all the tactics and hacks that are out there with me today, Jake Badsgard. He is the CEO and founder of Disruptive Advertising, which you can visit at disruptiveadvertising.com slash twist. So some questions for you, Jake, when is too early to start marketing your Cyber Monday uh, or your Black Friday? What's the right time to engage people and how do you engage them? Yeah, you know, that's going to depend on the audience, but the, the cheapest customer is the person that's already bought from you before. And it's time today to start warming up the audience that bought from you last year. Uh, with custom audiences on social or email, uh, it's time to get on top of those right now and getting them warm and, and ready to engage. Uh, as far as new audiences are concerned, there's a lot of opportunity to explore new platforms outside of the traditional Google, Facebook uh, channels uh, like uh, Insta uh, Instagram, TikTok, some of these other ones, LinkedIn, YouTube. Let's get some new audiences in place and test those out and find what's working so that we're ready to scale when game time comes. All right, that's great advice. So if you want to sign up for a free digital marketing audit with Jake and his company, Disruptive Advertising, just visit disruptiveadvertising.com slash twist. And if you go into business with Disruptive, you will receive a $250 gift card and a free Friday to Sunday ski trip in Utah. Uh, we'll see you on the slopes. It's going to be a great season.